Uh, let's bring in Gino now. I wonder what a guy like Gene does in August when the NHL is supposedly slowing down. Let's, <laughs> there he is. How you doing, Gino? Oh, I, I heard I'm ageless, which uh, that's the nicest thing I've <laughs> heard in a long time. I'm not sure it's true. I'm, I'm doing great. August is, uh, is usually the kind of the quietest month of the year uh, for me. Uh, this year has been different because uh, unrestricted free agency, which is normally July 1st, uh, was July 28th. But uh, yeah, it is, it is the quietest uh, month because there's not much happening. I think even GMs go on holidays, even though they bring their phones with them. Uh, so it's it's nice before uh, September rolls around, training camp gets going, and uh, we start up again with the Oilers. Well, I appreciate you finding some time for us because it is a month not off, but uh, like you say, not pedal to the metal. However, just a, just an overall look back the last couple months, have you stopped and said, wait a minute, man, just signing Darnell Nurse, acquiring Duncan Keith, signing Zach Hyman, all the things, you know, the expansion draft they went through, it has been quite an offseason for the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, and then throwing trading, uh, you know, fellow Saskatchewan. Uh, Ethan. Saskatchewanite? Yeah, Ethan Bear, who's one of my favorites and uh, still is. And lots going on. I mean, um, I think, uh, Rod, in, in, this is just a kind of an unofficial opinion or estimation on my part is I think after being in Detroit for so long, Ken Holland understood Detroit inside, outside, left, right, center. And then you get to a new city and, you know, I I think it takes like anybody, no matter what you do, it takes you a while to get plugged in and acclimatize and understand uh, what you have, what you need, what you want. And I think that's kind of where Ken's at. I, I think going from the last trade deadline into the first round defeat to Winnipeg, uh, into the draft, free agency. Um, he understood, hey, this is what I have. And generally that starts with Connor and Leon. And this is what I need. I need a, another top six forward. And I, I need another bottom six forward. Um, I need a defenseman who's got uh, an incredible resume. I need to sign a defenseman who we think is going to be an incredible defenseman for a long time. So I think he checked off a lot of the things uh, that he feels the team uh, needs. And, I, I mean, I like the moves. Um, you know, people look at Darnell's contract or Duncan Keith's age. And, you know, there's always something that people will sort of uh, pick at uh, or try to dissect, it, not necessarily in a positive way. But if you're Ken Holland, if you're an Oilers fan, you have to feel pretty good about where this team looks like they're headed starting, you know, next month and, and through the fall and winter. For sure. And I want to come back on... Ken Holland in a moment. Jennifer's watching from the Four Seasons Sports Palace, uh, home of the Seattle Kraken Fan Club, and she says, oh. "She says still sad about Ethan. I think we need to spend a minute on Ethan, uh, the yeah. pride of Ochapaway's First Nation. Honestly, when I saw that he was going to Carolina, I thought good for both change of scenery. I just think he's because he's not as young as you think. I believe he's going to be 25. I just think a change is needed for both. That's my take on that. What's yours?" Yeah, I, I think the one thing that the winners have uh, really done well, and it started previously with uh, the GM Peter Shirelli and has continued with Ken Holland, is that they've they've either uh, you know drafted real well, or you know in some cases traded for a guy like Duncan Keith or signed defensemen, and and they have a lot of them. Uh, some aren't even playing yet, and uh, should be very soon. Evan Bouchard has had uh, you know a, a, the old cup of coffee. Uh, Philip Broberg is expected to be up here in the next year or two so they've, they've got uh, lots of quality on defense and they felt like they could give up some of that to get something they need and that's a a big strong forward who can play a little bit up and down the lineup but is okay in that sort of third line role like warren fogel i know as a fan you know when you make a trade and you trade away a kid like ethan bear who is you know to me a 10 out of 10 as a person you know, you, when you have to maybe Google or kind of go, Warren Fogle, exactly, you know, who is that? It, it, particularly because you don't play Carolina much in the first place, then you don't play them for the entire season. So people kind of have to refresh their memories a little bit. But he's what the Oilers need. Um, you know, some thought, geez, maybe can't they find a way to continue to have Ethan? And I think with Ethan, he, he isn't unbelievable offensively. He isn't unbelievable defensively. He's just a really good defenseman who can kind of do everything. And I think the Oilers were looking to kind of have someone who's, you know, obviously Tyson Berry specifically, he's more offensive oriented. 
uh, Cody Cece specifically defensive oriented. So I think they wanted the roles a little more uh, specific and uh, felt like they could get something in return for Ethan, even though it's unfortunate. I hate to see him go. Got it. And uh, no, well, I wouldn't say there's, I won't say I'm, there's no bigger Ethan Bear fan than me because he's got a lot of hardcore fans. But I will say this, when he's on the ice, there's always going to be a scoring chance for both teams. Just very uh, <laughs> thrilling to watch. And I love the kid. But back on the Ken Holland thing for a second, you would have been on the Zoom news conference with him when he was at his desk after yeah. the Duncan Keith trade. And he picked up that yeah. crystal golf ball. And I'm like, remember, he, he looked at it like it was a crystal ball. And he's like, well, I can't look into this and predict how it's going to work out. But I, we, we're yeah. trying to do the right thing here. And I'm like, whoa, the heat's getting <laughs> hot in the kitchen there for, our, for Holly. Is it? Yeah, well, yeah, well, you know what? Uh, being a GM is not crystal clear and exactly what you need to do and how you need yeah. to accomplish things. You know, Ken is, listen, he's got an incredible resume, and, and I, I don't think that he's no longer a great general manager. But the Duncan Key thing, I was actually a bit surprised, Rod. Like, I, I, I'm not, you know, Duncan has been in incredible shape his entire career. So, you know, I know he's, he just turned 38 after the deal. So, you know, okay, that's likely towards the, the latter end of his career. But, uh, you know, I've seen many great defensemen uh, who, including, you know, played for Ken, like Chris Chelios, to, to name one, Nicholas Lindstrom had a long career. I mean, Duncan Keith has had a wonderful career internationally and in the National Hockey League. So even if he's 38, to me, he, he plays younger than that. And I was, uh, you know, like he said, it was, it was basically, do you give up prospects or do you take on the entire cap hit? Money-wise, they're not paying him that much compared to the cap hit. But, yeah, the cap hit does take up some money that you might be able to use elsewhere. But I think people are going to not be worried about that when they get Duncan here. Uh, and I, I certainly think, you know, if you're Leon and Connor and Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Darnell Nurse and you see your GM go out and get a guy like Duncan Keith, um, that makes you feel pretty good. Uh, I think it makes you feel like, hey, we've got a guy who knows what it takes to win. And when he talks, people will listen. Something different than the Edmonton Oilers in terms of a question here from Ryan watching on YouTube. Where does Gene think that Kraken will land in the standings this season? Well, you know, after covering uh, Vegas and going, how have they done this and continued to do it? Kelly McCrimmon, a good Prairie boy, has now taken over, you know, alongside George, alongside George McBee. I think Seattle is going to be pretty good. I, I don't think they're going to be Vegas good. Uh, but I don't think they're going to be, you know, like Rod in the old days, the expansion draft, those teams were bad for, you know, a long time. I mean, that's just the way it was built up. Uh, but now when you're paying $500 million or $650 million to join a league, uh, you've got to get some quality. And I, I'm certain that Seattle has done that. I, you know, part of me would like to have seen them take Carey Price. Just, I, I don't know why exactly, because <laughs> I like Carey and I like him playing in Montreal, but... I mean, whammo, that would have been quite the the, the PR, uh, well, I guess, potential nightmare for Montreal and, uh, you know, dream come true uh, for Seattle to get a goalie like Carey Price. I think in the end it worked out kind of the best for both teams. I think it's going to be a very good team, Rod. Playoff-wise, I, I'm not sure about that because there's going to be lots of competition for those playoff spots, but people in Seattle who, you know, they have a, they have a great sports city and they have a great history in hockey – uh, so I think it's great that they have a team, and it's great that they're going to have a really good team to watch as well. Well, though that'll be some fun uh, road trips for you, for sure. Kelly McCrimmon, by the way, <laughs> yeah. the pride of plenty Saskatchewan. And uh, yes, you know, as you know, we are here in the hockey hotbed. The Stanley Cup was in town last night. Gino, by the way, Al Murray, uh, the assistant general manager of the Tampa Bay yeah. Lightning. It was his 24 hours with it. So we spent some good time with the Stanley Cup. And Phil Pritchard and Al was just, we had a big old time last night. Which, by the way, how much are you looking forward to getting back to normal in the NHL? If that's a thing, because Labardius was on here a while back. Yeah. It was during the Stanley Cup final. He's like, we still don't know if we're going to travel. We still don't know what the deal is. How how hard was it in the pandemic for you and will things get back to normal once the NHL starts up this fall from your perspective? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's start with the second question first. I, I mean, my guess, and I haven't received any uh, information, certainly officially either from the national hockey league or Rogers or sports. And I mean, I, I think we ease our way back. I don't think I'm, I'm back flying on planes all over North America and uh, doing what we did 
up until 2020. Uh, do we, though, start to travel a little more within Canada, potentially, as uh, Edmonton you know, won't be in the Canadian division, but we'll still see, obviously, a lot of Calgary, a lot of Vancouver, Winnipeg, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal. I, I think that would be kind of the hybrid where you would sort of go, okay, we're not going to run everything uh, full, but we're not going to also go back to where there, there's no travel at all. Yeah, it was different. I mean, I enjoyed being home and uh, I'm still married. So that, that seemed to work out because I normally <laughs> don't spend that much time with my wife. Uh, so that, that was great uh, after 24 years. But, you know, I, I think, Rod, um, as we all, uh, I guess, pull and cheer for normalcy, that that's what I normally do. So that's... I think what I need to get back to my routine, that obviously will be decided by others. But I, I think it's uh, another piece of the uh, you know pie in regards to getting back to where you've been and what you've been doing. And so we see it a little more on a daily basis, particularly in Alberta, where the masks have been uh, you know, dropped a little bit quicker than around the, the rest of the country. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, listen, it's, it's great. One of the, the big... Um, Fringe benefits, as you know from your travel, is travel, right? People used to always ask me, what's the best part of your job? What's the worst part? Well, the best part is often the travel, seeing the games, uh, meeting athletes, former athletes that you go, wow, I, I remember growing up watching them. Worst part was, you know, with three young kids, it was it was pretty difficult. Um, so you missed out on a lot of stuff. Uh, so I, th I think we're going to get somewhere back to in between, not quite to where things used to be, but not quite to where things have been. We have a lot of questions have come in, but only 60 seconds. The one I love the most is, sure. how do you think Jordan Eberle will fare in Seattle? Oh, I love that. I, I think that's great. I think Jordan is, you know, West guy. Uh, his family will like the fact that they can probably fly direct from Calgary to Seattle uh, to watch him. Jordan's always, you know, you know, been one of my one of my favorites. Uh, from uh, one time I met him at a restaurant, he was still playing for Regina. I went over and introduced myself. They were in town actually for a little preseason tournament with the Oil Kings and a few other Western teams. And I, I kind of he sort of knew who I was, but I'm not sure he did. And I just kind of said, "Listen, I think I'm going to be covering you for uh, many years to come." So I just wanted to come over and say hello and introduce myself. And it wasn't. Uh, to continue with Edmonton, but it's still around the National Hockey League. I love the pickup. I think he's going to have a good year. Um, you know, I, Jordan, to me, is one of those guys I wish was still in Edmonton, but things happen for various reasons, and I think it's a, a great choice by Seattle. I think it's going to be wonderful for, for Jordan and his family, and both the you know, extended family and his own family with a couple of kids. Uh, you know, two thumbs up for having the kid uh, back out west. He's... He'd have known who you were. He's sneaky smart, right? He plays dumb very yeah. well. Almost too well sometimes. <laughs> Gino, thanks for the time. Enjoy the rest of summer. Always enjoy seeing your smiling face. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Rod. Take care, pal. Gene Principe joining us from the City of Champions. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.